Hello and welcome to the Morning Star series, Why Should I Invest With You? I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by BlackRock's Evie Hambro, manager of the Golden General Fund. Hello, Avi. Hi, Emma. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Looking at your three-year figures, very positive, up 12% on an annualised basis, but it's been a bumpy ride, hasn't it? Mm. Last year, in particular, had some very interesting figures when you compare it to the benchmark, and that is because of your quality bias. What was that disparity? Yeah, well, last year was an extraordinary year. We always had so many different moving parts with, you know, culminating really in the peak of the gold market in 2016, around the Brexit timeframe when gold had a massive spike. So a lot of the junior stocks in the, in the sector with kind of lower quality assets, uh, more marginal, when we had that move higher in the price, their share prices took off. And our fund has never really had that much exposure to some of those companies, and that, that left us behind a bit. But I guess it's a little bit like the kind of the, the, the tortoise and the hare. You know, over time, we, we, we caught up. And uh, if you look at the numbers now, I think, um, you know, the, those days are but a memory. So uh, we're pretty comfortable with our strategy that's worked well for 25 years now. Obviously, gold is in the name. Um, and you are reliant in a lot of ways on the gold price. But how correlated is it? Is it an exact correlation? Are you sort of beholden to that gold price? Yeah, that's a really good question because that um, data changes a lot. Um, so there are periods of time in the history of the fund where um, the gold price has been going up and gold shares as a group, and, and obviously that's what we invest in, have actually been going down. So if you, if you look at the periods, kind of 2012 was a good example, 2011, uh, when gold prices were rising very rapidly and heading up towards those peaks, um, gold shares were being left behind. And actually, uh, in some of those years, they actually fell. The reason for that is that the management of the, of the gold mining companies at that time were focusing their businesses on growth and making some fairly value destructive investment decisions. And gold equities were being derated, um, so they were losing their multiple. So their businesses were performing, the profits were rising, but because the multiples were contracting, the share prices weren't actually going up. Um, those are anomalous. Normally, we tend to move in the same direction as the gold price and at a multiple of it. So the historical number is about one to three. So for a 1% change in the price of gold, up or down, um, the shares normally go up about 3% or go down by 3%. And gold tends to fare well when there's a lot of uncertainty around. I think the current political climate certainly speaks to that. You have um, Donald Trump in the White House, um, who is unpredictable, um, if not exciting. You've got European elections this year. How much do you take into consideration those macro factors, not least the Middle East and, and yeah. Korea, when you are making investment decisions? Yeah, so we tend to think primarily about the companies because we think we can add value by spotting opportunities that sit inside companies that might not necessarily be recognized by the market. And if we can get those bits right, if the gold price goes up or down, those individual events that we're targeting should release value. If they release value when the gold price is going up, they will make that company significantly outperform in a rising market. And in a falling market, it should stop those companies from falling as much as the, as, as the sector. So it's it's that that's our main focus. I would agree with you, though, that gold is a safe haven asset, and in times of trouble, it does tend to deliver um, the kind of insurance qualities that people look to it for. Um, in today's environment, where you have got a lot of uncertainty, and you've mentioned a number a number of the factors, we are we have seen a significant increase in investors coming to us, and uh, on the basis that they want to take a little bit of money off the table. You've got the Dow and the Nasdaq and equity markets as a whole at all time highs. People have made a lot of money by having exposure, so to take a little bit of money off the table and put it into something that will protect you seems to make sense. Uh, and a lot of clients are choosing gold as a diversification tool and, and thankfully they're choosing our fund as one of the things to use. As a fund manager in any sector, I imagine that you want the stocks that you hold in times when they don't do so well to take a step back and look at the way that they can cut costs, that they can take that difficult medicine in order that when times rally again, they absolutely appreciate from that upside. Yeah. Has that been done in the mining sector? Have they made the changes that were necessary? Yes. Well, the, the mining sector has been through a horrendous time for the sector as a whole, not just gold equities. So we've had, you know, the, the kind of Chinese related boom in the in the last decade and, and again, it peaked with the, 
after the injection of capital in 2009, with share prices getting to their highs in 2011. Uh, and so the, the unwinding of some of the mistakes as the kind of the capital tide went out and left people with their mistakes fully exposed, um, that's taken a long time to, to resolve, whether it's cost inflation that was baked into the businesses, inefficiencies, lack of productivity, poor investment decisions either by building things uh, inappropriately uh, in terms of the, the cost or buying stuff at too high a prices. We've been through now five years of kind of sorting that out and now the businesses have kind of rebased themselves a little bit like a kind of control alt delete on a computer and we've got businesses today that are in much much better shape than they have been for a long time. In actual fact that process probably came to an end in the beginning of last year. Abby thank you very much. Thanks very much Emma. This is Emma Wolf from Morningstar. Thank you for watching.